I'm doing right now is making flanges for that boiler. to connect this is for the main steam turret off that valve and uh, we've got the safety valve bonded to do which is right there it's kind of interesting the valves are under here this is the common um, exhaust for both of these safety valves of course one lifts before the other one um, we got to set all that calibrated and uh, this is a poor man's milling machine I wish we had a better setup but it's not mine so we got to make do with what we've got. I had to tighten up these gibs, you know, make the handles almost impossible to turn in order for the thing not to wander all over the place. And uh, this table leaves a lot to be desired as well. So I never assume someone knows what a tool is because I've met plenty of people out there, some of them even older than me, who work on stuff like this and they've never seen certain tools. So this is a rotary gasket cutter. It's uh, Pretty simple. There's a knife blade on here, and if you slide this center pivot arbor up and down, you can vary the radius of the circle that it cuts. So you see how it works, cutting a circular slot. There's the knife blade, which is just a razor blade. There's the arbor, and the table that we're working on, it's got this metal piece in the center, which is just an arbor for this thing to ride in. So we're almost through. These flange gaskets get annoying. I prefer the threaded kind, but the British engines and boilers are full of the flanges. So, might have to extend that blade down a bit too because this gasket is so thick. Or, we can flip it upside down, go through the existing hole, finish the job that way. It should be good. Yep, there it is. I'm just going to cut the outside. I don't know if anyone's ever dealt with this problem. I'm sure you have, but we got a nut here that is absolutely jammed on this, and we got to use these studs to hold that flange together. I found these four with these nuts on them, but they are really on there. They're probably paint jammed. So one way of getting them off, can't damage nothing. These studs are not, or the nuts rather, are not critical. You know, they're not fancy or antiques, so we don't really care about holding them in vice jaws, but we got to get it off without hurting the stud. So fairly old trick that a lot of people don't seem to have been taught. We're going to, we need to put a solid head on the end of this stud, like a bolt. We're gonna make one out of two nuts that are locked together. So we're gonna get this one down enough that we have exposed thread. Gotta make sure that it'll still move when we're done. I'm gonna put another one on back to back. Take two. cinch them together like this, turn the back one, and out it goes. So if you need to save a stud, you don't want to destroy the threads or anything, that's how you get it out, and then all you do is get these off. Same process in reverse. Always use the wrench the correct way or else you'll break the wrench. That's another thing that they don't teach anybody anymore. You know, just little things.
we've got a gasket. I got a seat pump. Sweet. You got attacked by a clipboard. Mm -hmm. I have to tell my friends that. Now you're set to be a manager. Sweet. No, not sweet. <laughs> that's the end of your life. Oh, that's a bitch. Oh no, it's one on the sixteenth. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Well, here you go. Perfect. Thank you. And then you need a I thought I had a driver. A, yeah. yeah, a driver. I thought I had a driver here earlier. Thank you, sir. Yep. Double, double toilet trouble, fire burn, and cauldron bubble. Right, Elijah just spent a hideous amount of time cutting out this gasket with dull blades. I apologize. No. it's It was a considerable effort on your part, so thank you for it. Sure. Yeah, we just have to get... So this is the safety valve bonnet. we got two of them in here. They exhaust out one port. One lifts before the other, of course. I have to adjust them. And uh, that tapered key that was in that one, the one that I made, it must have fallen out when you were working on it. So that's ah. that's going to be on the bench somewhere. You know what? I think that's what that middle piece was. So Aha. I'll check. Okay. Good thinking. Yeah. yeah. I better go grab it. And we loosely have the very, very beautiful gauge uh, right here. That's all tightened up now, so that guy ain't going anywhere. Oh, good, 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 good. Perfect. Yeah, it faces forward, of course, because see, that's there's going to be a lot of things up for debate on this. You know, some people think one way and some people have the other way. Like, for instance, see how the pigtail is over the valve? See, yeah. those taper cocks, they're liable to leak sometimes. The problem is if we have a cock above the pigtail where it's technically supposed to go mm -hmm. the steam will get through the pigtail and fill it up and push the condensate build up in the bottom out and then you'll fry the gauge so if the cock starts leaking down there you don't get rid of the condensate slug from the pigtail and you don't ruin your gauge okay. so that's that's one of those little things you see how the gauge is facing forward you know technically oh, right, you right. want the guy at the fire door to, to see the to pressure see. but the problem is the sight glass is on the back head of yeah. the boiler, or the, well, in this case, the front head. So we've got the so, top and the bottom. So the sight glass is not where the fire door is, which is really not ideal. So the debate would be, do you have the pressure gauge facing the water level or facing the fire door? And really, you want it facing the fire door because a fire takes more skill and thought to manage than a water level does. Water level, assuming all your apparatus are working right, the pumps, its injectors, etc. the water level is you turn a handle and you begin increasing the water level. Whereas a fire takes more street smarts, I guess. I would prefer the really heavy, real machine nuts, like in the steam days, when, you know, instead of being rolled threads like these crappy modern nuts are, they were properly cut threads with a, with a tap or sometimes even a a, an internal single point thread cutter and of course one the the crown of the nut was crowned and the bottom of the nut was flat with a machine surface on that end so you really had uh, good engagement these modern nuts are nothing like that and um, sometimes you get a grade 8 nut and they're not like that even so so we need to probably make some if we really want proper nuts and bolts on everything but this, this needs to be done very, uh, it needs to be properly done. All these, these horrible yeah. blanking plates and everything need to go. I want proper, uh, proper flanged fittings on everything and a full suite of turret valves and uh, everything else you can think of. A whole smorgasbord. I don't like these. Well, let's see if we can make this an annual thing. No, that would be, that would be nice. I mean, especially ever since the gaping hole in the steam community was left when they threw out Conrad Milster 
from Pratt. Hello, Conrad, if you're watching this. Um, and they, they silenced his wonderful, wonderful New Year's Eve whistle celebration at his power plant. That was um, such a beautiful power plant. Too. We have been needing something like that. So we have down there a whole, a whole gigantic uh, assortment of whistles a la Conrad Mostert. <laughs> So are we on? Yes, sir. All right. We are. We're going to have, and again, when it heats up, these boilers, everyone expects them to be tight when they're cold. You might be able to get them like that when they're fresh out of the factory and everything is freshly machined surfaces and whatever, but they're rarely ever perfect when they're cold. You got to wait for them to heat up. You'll see all these little leaks and things, and then you start nipping them up. Right. And uh, after a few times, you know, this, this whole idea of, um, you get it right with no test runs is um, is fucking ludicrous. I remember this this quote uh, on on the one of the recent restorations of a locomotive we shall not name at present, where this this fucking imbecile who ought to know better, you know, he's not just some guy. He's he's a guy who goes around and works on this all the time. And he goes he goes, it's theoretically possible to not have to do any test runs, and it should be fine. And it's like. No. And even if the restoration was perfect and went off without a hitch and wasn't a fiasco, which this one was, that wouldn't be true. So this is the kind of thing we're up against now. Snug tight, you said? Yeah, just snug tight so it pulls the thing up against the boiler. Because I was going to say... If we were going to do that flat gasket, um, now see if this was really nicely done, right? like if it was, if it wasn't fucked up, right? We would take this, right? Yes. And we'd put it between there, but this is not thick enough to fill that gap all the way around. Okay. So we're not going to do that. What we are going to use this on is this. Okay. We're going to use it on this stuff to seal it. For the door. We're going to use furnace cement on this so we can keep it tight. So I'll tell you what. You can go a little bit tighter and snug. Okay. Because we have the NICs, so we're good there. Um, yeah, okay. Furnace cement. There's a bucket of it. Uh, Corey. Yes, there it is. Right there. Do these go down to... Oh, yes. Good. Okay. We have here, um, Alex and I got the smoke box on. It's it's old and really a new one should be built. Anyway, there was a lot of uh, corrosion and pretty much rot all along the inside of this thing. So what Alex and I did was get our hands dirty and we put this um, sealing cement in here because um, if you don't seal this any outside air is just gonna come in it's not gonna create a draft up the chimney this is uh, this is where the chimney ends at least part of the uh, smoke box there's the extension over there so we actually have a sufficient draft but we have to seal this up um, to create a draft and uh, yeah, it's messy, but we're going to clean all of this up. All the excess. Has yeah, to all come the off. excess has to come off off the tubes, off the nuts, and as well as the outside. This stuff is horrible. It should be rope gaskets, but the smoke box was rusted out and had to get rebuilt. And you see all the par fire. Yeah. You know, so the shape isn't right anymore, so it doesn't mate to the boiler right anymore. So that's why the rope gaskets don't really do anything. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we got to, you know, it's got to, we got to redo a lot of stuff. It'll need a new one. Get it perfect. Yeah. But for what it is, it's temporary, so yeah. when... Uh, just to get it steaming right. Yeah, just, just to get it steaming right. And then um, once that's done... This is going to get rope gasket. Yeah, we will rope gasket this because this is where the actual smoke box doors go here. And, um, yeah. We would have to bang it in with something. Okay, get a hammer. I'll hold it. I hate doing that. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, we still gotta put the rope gasket in, so this is just a trial fit. We're gonna put rope gasket all the way around the thing. That's all right. We'll do that. Um, all right. So we gotta get that that open again. We gotta put the rope gasket on. Yeah. Uh, with that spray adhesive stuff, that high heat. I don't know if Corey. He said he got it. I don't know where it would be. You see these here? These are the grates. And I'm putting them in. Drop. Oh no, <laughs> the gap gets easier to be. coming from it was like that was light it was oh. right there i was so freaked out there's no there's no light over there you scared the crap out of me was like, I, I put my hand there i was like wait there's no shadow what's going on i thought it was hallucinating god you find a ways to scare the shit out of me you didn't know the phone was here recording this whole time no. <laughs> I got that on video too. I was like, what the hell's going on with this light thing that's coming from nowhere? <laughs> I can't believe Elijah that. Elijah scared the crap out of me with his light because I thought that I had finally lost my marbles. <laughs> Alex and I have been busy all morning getting things together, but one of the main things we've been doing so far is getting these fittings to go on the engine. Here's a Type 2, and then there are two uh, Type Ks. These are uh, Navy engines now what we did here is this is a one inch pipe and then this one is a two inch so we oh boy yes. hydrostatic lubricators yes. but so here we have the uh union and then we have two reducer bushings that'll connect to that steam pipe right there where my finger's pointing so 
we got those um alex where's that polished uh fitting which this one yeah let's this see this I get these done. okay and there's, and there's another one over there but i'm just uh this steering is we're going to be doing a lot of work with the ones that we're just going to sort of plug in and run we're going to have an alpha oiler on the moving end of the steam hose that we're going to put on put the alpha oiler on we're not going to carry the hose around with it connected because if someone drops it like an idiot it'll smash to pieces uh, but the engines that we're going to be doing a lot of work on and running for a while i want to have permanent lubricators on so here's our connection just like this i'm going to have to get a bush in there you see mm -hmm. i think i'm going to use this one um, most of the ones he has. Ah, you see, we have to repack this. Ah, yeah, uh, the glass. To, we're yeah. gonna have, so every lubricator in there. This is this is the frustrating thing. His whole collection. Everything looks great, but nothing has packing in it. Nothing is aligned correctly. No bearing is shimmed right. So we're that's what we're for. We're, we've got to do all of this stuff, and we're we're gonna have to make several trips down here to get it all done. But uh, this trip is the get things running sort of quickly, uh, and film them trip. So. There's lots to do. Those are some beautiful lubricators. Yes, they are. This and this, one, this one bothers me because there's no, actually they both bother me because there's no level sight glass for the reservoir where you have one oh, on the side yeah. and the water comes up from the bottom and the oil goes up. Uh, there's just the drip. So this is the drip meter and the drip meter. Um, so this is the steering engine yeah, though. This is one of my favorites here, actually because it's the most interesting. Instead of just a stupid engine that just sits there and runs and runs, uh, this one is a computer, and we'll get into how it's a computer later, but you have, to, you have to work it back and forth to show it operate, but the way it works is really interesting. It, it has a combination throttle and reverser valve here, and it's a force magnifier, so power steering. You tell it where to go, and it goes that far and no further automatically. You tell it to go back the other direction, it does that. Um, it's quite interesting. So uh, I am going to. There's a leak in here. Yeah, I so heard that. We have to we have to get this throttle valve off and address that. It's really awful. So let's do all that. All right. I'm going to have you put this together with this and a union. Okay. Right? And threaded end goes that way. Remember for this. Yep. So this is a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is a uh, high four-digit price of stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. Thanks, uh, various... He's just lost on what he wants to say right now. I, I, I can't say everything I want to say right now. That's yeah. true. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, okay, I'm going to need a one and a half... T, if you please. One and a half T. Yeah, and here I'm we gonna go. Need, I'm gonna need to grab the dope. Um, uh, the dope is right still, yeah. Oh, that looks much better. Well, I mean, it's gonna get covered in soot, which is fine, but I just wanna cover the pipe dope. Okay. All right, well, I apologize for not taking a lot of video today because we've been focusing on working and we have made a lot of progress. So right now, I'm getting ready to put all this together. And we Alex are building, has... We are building a power plant from the ground up. This is something, this is a lot of fun. So all these fittings here, we're building uh, an exhaust. So this is an exhaust feed water heater that I designed and had made up. It's going to transfer the most of the heat from the exhaust steam and the pumps to the ingoing feed water if all goes according to plan. Um, and we're constructing the feed water discharge rail that hooks up to the cold end right there. And the feed water transfer to the boiler and the exhaust rail for the pumps, which is going to get all of our three feed pumps exhausting into the end of this, the hot end. Um, this is the hot end of the exchanger for water. So it's, this is going to kind of be out here and it's going to go around like that. 
Um, we've got the turret being polished up right now before it goes on the boiler, so it looks presentable. That'll be the last thing that we do today. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure to get a video of that happening. Yep. So all this was just a big puzzle, big logistics puzzle, which I love. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> as much as you were getting frustrated throughout the day. I can't wait to see it work. Yeah, me neither. I got frustrated from the little things, like how we didn't have enough fittings at the at the beginning. Corey had to make so many trips. Um, but he came through. Oh, he always. I'm gonna. I gotta not just buy that man a dinner. I gotta buy him a restaurant. <laughs> um, yeah. So stay tuned. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's the stuff for the turret. Wonderful, wonderful. It stops. It stops. Yeah, I know. All right, let me get part. We'll get the blower. Blower is part A. Part A. All right, here we go. turn it or do you think it's too tight? I think I can do one more. Okay, go ahead then. Just be careful. All right, so today has been the day of the piping apocalypse. We have been doing more pipe fitting than I've, I've seldom done this much in a day. Um, small plant, but very complicated. This whole thing is going to be exhaust steam feed water heated from its own feed water pumps. Oh, there you go. And I got to thank Mr. Corey here. This guy has been running like around the fucking equator to get all the stuff that we needed. He must have put, I don't know, 3,000 miles. He's been gone and here and gone again. He was about ready to strangle me over all these specialty pipe fittings, but uh, thanks, Corey. Hey, no problem, man. You, you're doing a good job. Well, maybe. All right, yeah, you know, what, you know what I did? I doped it at the wrong angle, but that's okay. Yeah, just kind of cinch it, because if you put the force on them, it'll break. Oh yeah. Once the pipe work is all together, we're gonna um, we're gonna run you through how it works. We'll make you a little sort of video system map. Devin's also been helping. Me. Not Devin Montalbano. It's another Devin. Hi Devin. Other Devin. How you doing? I hope you're well. Um, but uh, uh, Devin here is what a computer guy? Uh, computer engineer. Engineer. Marine engineer. Right. Well, I mean, he's got steam product. experience. His business is, is like marine wiring and computers, the stuff that'll sink you and make your engine crap out for no reason in the middle of the harbor. But, uh, I'm the guy that fixes that. Right. But um, he's got a lot of steam experience. And like even, even to the point where 
he was asking me like how deep do you want the ends of the pipe threaded you know because he was cutting us all this iron um, custom lengths to get us fitted up and I was like oh my god finally we got another guy who I don't have to explain everything to from the ground up so it's always nice when that happens on this episode of what species of orangutan used the Stilson wrench on a fitters union this might work Yeah, it'll work for now. Gotta be gentle though. So, for those of you who don't know, which is obviously, well, I won't go down that road, but with one of these things, all right? You see, we had our resident shop gorilla or whoever um, use the Stilson on this to tighten it in because the problem is, right, there's no hex or square underneath this and there's not enough room to even grab it with any kind of wrench under the collar. That's what these little tangs inside are for. One and two. You see them? There's a special tool, a driver that goes down in there. So you got to get something like that if you don't have it. And you tighten it up like this. All right? So for all you guys that need to know, if you run into that situation, always look inside. These old steam builders were not stupid. They always gave you a way to do something. Do not think that you're smarter than the old guys because you're not. <laughs> Specialties is smothering warning devices. <laughs> see this here? Fuck you. Quiet down. Oh yeah, I see what he's doing. You know what's nice too? We'll be right next to the drain. Yep. That's uh, That's right. That's good because we're going to hydro. We're going to have water everywhere. Getting the water level down to the proper level after the hydro is done. Make sure you don't actually scrape the boiler. That's the big thing. You cannot touch the boiler with this. Come back around. Okay. Good. Parallel with the buildings. Okay, so the main engines and everything are going to go over here. This is going to be the feed water and engineering section there. Is your fuel? Um, yeah. All yeah, right. Things are actually my diabolical plan is coming to fruition. <laughs>
We're getting it hooked up. So far, the main stuff is done. Um, we got to get this here together. And then we'll be ready to fill the boiler. But for now, just to get ahead of schedule, I'm going to start filling the firebox with fuel. Well, you got to take care of that door, too. All right. getting down to business here. We're filling up this boiler with water here in prep for a hydro test. But right now, we're just washing all the bad stuff out of it. Um, there was some stuff settled at the bottom. It all came out in about 60 seconds, which is a pretty good sign. So we're gonna let that circulate for a while. Then I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna reopen it so that the head of water in the boiler gets a much higher speed of water, blast some more out. Of course, when we're all done with this thing, for the weekend, we're going to give it the, wa the biggest washout it's probably ever had in its life. We're going to take all the hand holes out, the one on top, the manhole, etc. Let's close that off and let it build for a while, and then we'll open it again. Uh, but uh, all tasks have been completed. Mr. Devin here has been helping fit everything, and Corey has been running all over the place. Um, Doug managed to finish policing this water rail, but. Uh, we were going to have it all done, but he, he would have died if he had tried to do that all in the time frame that we wanted. So, yeah. Otherwise, um, oh, what happened here? These these are supposed to face uh, that way. Oh, that was that was tight. I was moving. He could. Uh, I'm going to spin them around a little bit more. I got to get this. One oh, okay. Got I was saying when they face this way, you need the when because there's a bend between the axis of that right, and that, away. when you spin it, you know, they face this way, but the gauge backs are parallel to each other, so we can get like a board behind them or something. Right. You know, because, you know. Uh, I don't want to tighten you any more than you are. It across the room, so. 